sometimes I get questions like, Why are you so critical? And, Why do you nitpick good watches? Or occasionally, the timeless, If you don't have anything good to say, then don't say it. I'm sure the thought process behind these comments varies from naivety to cynicism or potentially disgruntlement. But the reasoning behind my approach to content really is very simple. I want you, the viewer, to get a realistic, thorough look at the pros and the cons of whichever watch is in question. And ideally, I want the products to keep improving. Some brands get triggered by criticism and will stop sending review samples out to reviewers who give negative feedback, preferring to control the narrative instead by restricting coverage to those who fall in line. However, others use their brains and have realized that perhaps the feedback from those whose job is literally to review watches every day could be valuable. The latter approach seems to have been taken by Nozomi, who've made some interesting alterations to their latest release after their previous effort did the rounds before. I reviewed the Nozomi Lowe's chronograph back in mid-2020, and the title summed up my thoughts pretty well. The vintage-inspired Panda design was passable, and the build quality was fairly solid from such a young brand. However, I just wasn't sure what made it stand out. There are tons of similar Mecha Quartz faux vintage pieces on the market right now, and that one just didn't offer a particular reason to pull the trigger. 12 months go by, and they email me again, this time about a new addition to their lineup, the Tonnerre Chronograph. I think that's how to pronounce it. At first, I kind of fobbed it off and didn't read it properly, expecting it to likely be another half-decent, albeit unremarkable watch that wouldn't be of huge interest to my viewers. It fell through the cracks, basically. It was only when they sent me a follow-up email a month or two later that I finally realized what a doo-doo I've made. This time, I took a nosy on their site to see what they were banging on about, and was met by a striking timepiece that, at least from the product shots, looked much more refined than its predecessor. I've got a small chronograph roundup in the works, and this seemed like a perfect candidate for that. So I decided to take a punt and accepted their request. They sent this tonnerre across to me, and the impressive final product is a testament to their open approach to criticism. Let's take a look at what they've changed from last time and how this reworked piece stacks up. It's linked below for your convenience. Okay, the packaging is an immediate upgrade with a more premium box that puts many more expensive brands to shame. The felt lining and leatherette outer aren't so important in the grand scheme of things, but do make for a pleasant unboxing experience that could leave a smile on the recipient's face. You can see I opted for the off-white creamy variant, reference number TQ1102, which is shipped on a black leather strap. You'll notice in many of these shots, a third-party strap is fitted instead, for reasons I'll mention later. Regardless of how yours is customized, the Tonair will have the same case proportions at exactly 38mm across, with a thickness of 11.8mm, including the crystal, and a short lug-to-lug -lug of only 45 and a half. What does this mean, then? Well, it means that I've finally got a chronograph that fits me. Sure, the Siegel 1963 that I'll be featuring soon does a reasonable job of this too, but the look to look here is noticeably shorter, making the Tonnerre fit more compactly. Yes, for once, we possibly have a viable small chronograph on our hands. Unlike the Lowe's, this follow-up has a more consistent and better executed feel with a fully brushed look that pairs well with the nautical stopwatch theming. It feels extremely well built with a weight well inside the Goldilocks zone, while the brushing has been completed to a standard that looks more than adequate for a watch at this price point. This part in particular looks great under our bright studio lighting. The previous entry felt a little too bulbous, with a thicker stepped case shape, stubbier lugs, and a glossy finish that deducted from its elegance. It just felt a little bit disjointed. The subtle alterations to this tonnerre leave it feeling sleeker and better proportioned. It does share some of the same characteristics as before, such as the full steel construction, obviously, as well as the 5 ATM water resistance level and screwed rear. Once more, we have a precisely done rear engraving, as well as a highly responsive pusher and crown arrangement that each are a joy to operate. I love the satisfying clunk of those pushers. The sweep of the chronograph hand indicates the re-emergence of the Seiko Mecha Quartz movement too, which is unsurprising at this price point. I prefer these to cheaper quartz alternatives, and I like how the hand instantly snaps back to 12 when reset. No need to change that. There is a slight alteration to the crystal, which is still domed sapphire, but protrudes less, which I think is of both practical and visual benefit in this case. Not only does it help maintain the slimmer side profile, but it's also less likely to get caught during day-to-day -day usage, possibly prolonging its lifespan. Nice work, Nozumi. According to a press release they sent me, this design pays homage to the likes of the Oya Skipper and the Abercrombie & Fitch Seafarer, as well as the telemeter chronographs of days past. This is evident from the inclusion of those twisted lugs, as well as the turquoise accents on the subdials. I have to say, David, if you're watching, you nailed it this time. 
I think this watch looks better than both of those that inspired it, which is a hard feat to accomplish. The punchy teal hues perfectly complement the lighter tone across the rest of the dial, and the sizing of the chapter ring is spot on, effortlessly providing added interest without becoming distracting clutter. Unlike last time, there are no QC issues to speak of, with all the markers and the chronograph hand lining up perfectly, and even went the whole way and altered the logo too. I critiqued the previous model for having too much unnecessary text below the logo, and it seems they must have watched my video, as like I suggested, they've gone and removed the word Sweden from this one. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but I do think it looks much cleaner now, especially when the watch is on camera as it sits comfortably between the hands when they're in the popular photography position that's approaching 10 past 10. Additionally, the second hand here is much more clean and simple, forgoing the unusual and somewhat distracting N logo present on the last one. While less extravagant, I much prefer this one, and I like the combination of the distinctive blue body and white tip, which isn't found on many competing watches out there. The whole theme stands out without being garish. The only inherent drawback to the colour scheme is that legibility isn't the best, as the loom-filled central portions do somewhat blend into the background. Nevertheless, outside of that, I'm not sure there's anything I'd change. It's clear to me that plenty of careful planning has gone into generating this design, and the results speak for themselves. In fact, all three of the other variants look just as good as this one, from the looks of the product shots at least. Are you listening fashion watch brands and AliExpress specials? This is what a homage watch looks like, okay? Not a basic copy and paste of a famous watch and labelling it a homage. This tonnerre has taken small bits of design inspiration that have been spun off into something creative. I like that. Something I also like is the absence of ridiculous affordable luxury adverts packed with extreme claims about the build quality and materials used. Weirdly, this brand was started on Kickstarter back in 2015, and while they didn't receive as many backers as some more infamous projects, they also don't appear to have built a brand upon lies in the process. I think as consumers, we need to make a conscious effort to support these transparent companies that are making great products, rather than those who simply rely on aggressive social media marketing to shift units. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten the strap though. This one is equivalent to that I tried last time, meaning it's reasonable, though not great. For the majority of you, this will be wearable, but it's still a little loose on my very thin wrist, even on the last hole. Given that this compact watch will likely attract those with average or smaller sized arms, I think it could do with being shorter, or the option to simply order the watch with a different size strap would be nice. I switched mine out for this affordable 20mm sailcloth strap instead, which I think looks even better. It's linked below along with the watch itself. You can get cheaper MechaCores watches than this £250 tonnerre but I doubt you'll find many that so thoroughly deliver on their promises. If this rate of improvement continues, then I'm very excited to see what Nozomi pumps out next. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.